everyone, welcome to episode two of our podcast, Kelly's Roadhouse, where we recap every book of Sweet Valley High. I'm Paula and I'm here with my fiance Richard. Hello. And we are going to be recapping book number two, Secrets. Yes. So this book, um, we can't lie, it was a bit of a struggle to read for both of us. It was, uh, it was, I, I, it, oh, it took me two sittings and it's the shortest <clears throat> book I've ever seen in my life. It's really small, um, but it did take me two sittings. Um, yeah, they're usually about 150, 160 pages. Mm, double Love is This is a one's lot only 118 pages. Mm-hmm. So we were like, oh, great, it's, it's a lot shorter, but it's pretty, it, it's not boring, but, um, it gets better. The second half is better. It around the bush a lot about one thing and it's. Yeah, a lot of back and forth between Enid and Elizabeth. Um, hmm. Yeah, the, I thought the second half was stronger <clears throat> than the first half. Like when it when it got going, it was okay, but it took a while to get going. Yeah. So I've got the book in front of me here. Uh, this one is a yellow peach sort of color. Yeah, it's like an off beige. Um, and we'll put a picture of it up on you on our Instagram and YouTube. Yes. But I actually really like the picture on this cover. So it's um, Jessica on the phone on a bubblegum pink phone that looks really cool. Um, it's and, the princess phone. Yeah. And she has got a look on her face like she's talking about some juicy gossip or something. Um, Elizabeth is behind her looking horrified and sort of looking like she's having a go at her I guess. yeah yeah it's, it's a classic picture isn't it it's one of the one of the classic ones yeah it's one of my favorites mm. um and the tagline underneath is what jessica wants jessica gets even if someone gets hurt and which is true people do get hurt yes yeah. yes um, and then on the back jessica would stop at nothing beautiful and ruthless jessica wakefield is determined to be chosen queen of the fall dance at sweet valley high if she can win the contest, she's sure to win Bruce Patman, the most sought-after boy in school. The only person standing in Jessica's way is Enid Rollins. When Jessica discovers the truth about Enid's past, she knows the crown is within her grasp. She doesn't care that Enid is her twin sister Elizabeth's best friend, or that revealing the secret may cost Enid both her reputation and the boy she loves. Only Elizabeth can save Enid from Jessica's vicious gossip, but can she stop her, her scheming twin in time? Can, Can she? she? We're Indeed. Find out. Well, should we go through the book and find out? Yeah. Let's uh, let's do that. <clears throat> so, um, as with the first book, this book immediately opens with Jessica bitching about her appearance. Yeah. So it opens with Jessica getting ready for a date with her friend Kara. Best friend, apparently. Apparently, her best friend. Yeah. Even though Lila's her best friend, mm. but um, this book seems to keep referring to Kara as her best friend. Yeah. We don't know why. I guess they might have changed their minds. Um, I guess he might fall out later and become less friends, or I don't know. Um, and anyway, so Jessica's getting ready for a date, and she's fuming. Yes, yeah, she's absolutely uh, fuming, babes. Yeah, yeah. She says, "Look at me, I'm an absolute mess," and she's referring to her hair because um, in the at the end of the last book, she was dunked in the pool. Yes, it's yes. So it, it follows straight on from Double Love, where, where as revenge for all of the horrendous things that, uh, that Jessica did, uh, she just gets dunked in the pool. Uh, and apparently this is the most humiliating thing that's ever happened to Jessica. Yeah, so in, in the last book, she she cried rape. She, oh, should we recap all the awful she, things that um, Jessica did last gave time? gave her sister's name to the police when she was arrested. Yep. What else does she do? I can't remember. Uh, she nearly ran uh, Enid and Elizabeth over in the car. She stole the <laughs> car. Um, that was about it. I think that's probably enough. Yeah, for you all, know, that's for quite all that, a lot. She, she, she accused report. someone of rape, which is pretty horrendous. Yeah, exactly. Um, uh, and I'm also really confused because so at the start of this book, she's <laughs> like, "Oh, I will never, never live down the utter humiliation of being thrown in the pool." But it's like. You got thrown in the pool because everyone thought you were Elizabeth. So technically, people don't know you got thrown in the pool. Oh, yeah, They yeah. still think it's Elizabeth, right? So yeah. why does it matter? Um, and anyway, Kara tells her that when she got dunked in the pool, she looked like Bo Derek in a beach scene. Yes, yeah. She and, said, oh, yeah, it looked quite sexy, actually. You looked great. And Jessica great. smiles and agrees. Yeah. I, I did like, Oh, I did, actually, yeah. I did like that for a moment, Kara did kind of admit that Jessica was a bit of a bitch and kind of deserved it. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, ultimately she's um Oh yeah, she yeah, because she she says like you kind of had it you kind of had it coming. And then Jessica was like, um she's like 
if if I was at my house rather than your house, I'd have really let you have it. She's like, I would have like I would have kicked your head in for saying such a thing if it was at my house. But yes, then so then Kara is like, oh, actually, I think you looked great, and and it was like, oh, okay, I did look sexy, didn't I? And she kind of moves on from it. Yeah, and then, and then we get the description mm. of Jessica. Yes. So, as usual, beginning of every book, description of the twins how perfect they are, how amazing they are. Yeah. So this time it says, she is too gorgeous for words. Her sun-coloured hair shimmered about her tan shoulders, left bare by the silky Hawaiian print sundress that perfectly complemented her green eyes. Mm. Um, and then she starts talking about how she's been in love with Bruce Patman since freshman year. Well, right, since she was in love with Todd, like, last week. Oh, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Now, now it's Bruce, all of a sudden. Because last week, because last time, um, she was after Todd, and, and and because they're talking about the pool, I'm assuming this is only like a couple of days or a week later. Oh, her, still... hair's, her hair's still ruined from it. So. Right. So we're talking like maybe yesterday. How long does your hair take to recover from being dunked in a pool? Well, uh, I mean, after, I would say like an hour. After the first shower. Jessica clearly honest. thinks it's longer. So, you know, during that, she wanted Todd. And that was literally the other day. I'm going to go with a couple of days ago. So, so Double Love was a couple of days ago. She got thrown in the pool then. She wanted Todd. And... Elizabeth was approached by Bruce to go to the dance with her and she was just like oh you should have gone with him because he's got a Porsche and he's quite hot that was all she didn't ever say like oh I absolutely love Bruce but apparently now she's loved him forever she's talking about how they're both nominated for king and queen of the full dance yes another dance dance number two Dance number two and book number two. In book number two. And by we'll the see way... see how long this streak continues. Every well, book there's a dance. Well, I will say, skipping right to the, toward the end of the book, they mention there's another dance in three weeks. Oh, do they? Yeah, they do. So there, there's like at least another dance coming up. Maybe there's a up. dance in book three as yeah, well. Yeah, I, oh, I don't know. But yeah, dance count, dance count is officially at two right now. Um, so they're both nominated for King and Queen of the Full Dance. And if they both win... Bruce will naturally fall in love with her. Of course. Yeah, and, and, and so Jessica says that um, she wants to be with Bruce and crowned king and, uh, king and queen uh, of the dance. And it means everything to her. Everything. So the, the Pi Beta Alpha of, of the last week, that's forgotten now. That's not what she's always wanted. Now she's always wanted to be king and queen with Bruce. Um, um, she th- says Bruce will naturally fall in love with her if, if they both win. Yeah. But um, in, in the last book... Bruce asked Elizabeth out because he said he she was a fast number. He didn't realize she was such number. a fast number. Yeah, he he so. liked her for for going to the pub basically, yeah. didn't he? Yeah, yeah, for going to Kelly's. Uh, so speaking of Elizabeth, mm. she is in the kitchen with Enid baking cookies. Yes. But Enid has just dropped the measuring jug and is nearly in tears. Yeah, she breaks the measuring jug and she's she's all upset and she's like, I'm so sorry, Liz, I'm so sorry. Um, and then Liz is like, yeah, but, you know, what's going on? What's wrong? It's not just about dropping this. There's, there's something going on with you, Enid. So apparently Enid arrived at the house that night nearly in tears as well. Mm-hmm. Um, so she tells Liz she's afraid of losing her boyfriend, Ronnie, if he finds out the truth about her. Um, and the truth is that she's got a criminal record. Yes, uh, Liz unexpected. actually asks her if she's a cat burglar. <laughs> so two years after her parents' divorce, she fell in with a bad crowd and she started dating a guy called George Warren. It says they'd gone from drinking to drugs, trying just about everything that came their way. I bet it wasn't everything. I bet it wasn't everything. Sniffing yes. a prit stick. Straight as an arrow, <laughs> Enid wasn't always so straight. Yeah. So they used to have uh, drugs and alcohol, everything that came their way after uh, the divorce. Um, and it ended in a nightmarish climax, Paula. Mm. A nightmarish climax. Yeah. So so firstly, I thought, I, I, I reckon that they just like had some Bacardi breezers and sniffed just some Pritt stick. <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're probably I mean, this right. This is Enid, you know? Yeah. And she didn't have to go to rehab or anything. No, that's true. But um, yeah, so the nightmarish climax was that. Oh God, uh, well, they get notes. stoned and they're driving around in George's GTO and they hit a kid. And yeah. this book makes it sound like they splattered this kid all over their car. And they're like, it's like forever frozen in her memory was the sight of the tiny <laughs> crumpled figure on the pavement. But the kid's fine. He's, he's basically well, got, like, a broken arm and a mild concussion. Yeah, broken right. arm and concussion, yeah. But the book makes out like he's dead. Like, for a moment there, they're like, he's just a crumpled thing on the floor. And, like, it's forever burnt in my memory, my yeah. nightmares. But he's all right. He's all right. 
So yeah, they talk about the mother coming out screaming and running towards her son. Um, but yeah, he had a broken arm and a mild concussion. Enid has, you know, uh, never forgiven herself. They both got arrested. <clears throat> and they did uh, six months probation and Enid's turned her life around and hasn't seen George for two years. Mm. It says Enid came out as a new person with, uh, straight with grades to match mm. and George went away to boarding school. Yes, and, and so she hasn't seen him since. <clears throat> but... Yeah, so after this bit as well, we cut to Enid's in her monologue. Mm -hmm. um, so they're having a serious conversation. She's confessing she's got a criminal record and that she nearly killed a child. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And um, what's she thinking? She's thinking, uh, she's thinking, um, I've always thought Elizabeth was pretty, <laughs> though in a less flashy way than Jess. Yeah, yeah. So, so like, even, even, even now, like, even that now, someone's thinking you know, about that. Yeah. All, all people can think about is how pretty those twins are. And she's her best friend. Like, surely she's been around her enough now that she wouldn't think that at this point. It's like, yeah. you would have thought that, like, upon meeting her, maybe. But, like, it's like you've known her for yeah. years. You're best friend. So this, basically, this is just a way to shoehorn in the description of Elizabeth. Because uh, of we, course. We didn't get it at the beginning of the book. We only got the description of I'm Jessica. assuming this has to happen every book. They have every to book. get it in it somehow. To, yeah. yeah. So the description is, um, you know, I'd always thought Elizabeth was pretty, though in a less flashy way than Jess. It was a sparkle that went beyond her all-American good looks, the perfect white teeth, the spun sunshine hair. Elizabeth was a person who cared. Oh, wow. Mm. Yeah, it's always the, the American, uh, all-American all good, good looks. That seems to come up every time. That's the one the that, blue eyes and the blonde hair. that sticks in my mind. Um, and um, Liz says, well, look, you know, you having a, a police record changes nothing between mm. you and me. Um, but Enid worries about Ronnie. Um and Liz says, well, you know, it was two years ago, so it's practically prehistoric. Um, well, in the last book, Ronnie was absolutely disgusted with Elizabeth. He when was. He thought she'd gone to Kelly's. Yeah. He was saying to Enid, you shouldn't be her friend anymore. You shouldn't associate yeah, he, with her. He was, because even Todd was like, uh, you know, I'm not sure. But Ronnie was like, no, yeah. she's awful. She's horrendous. And all, all he thought she'd done, which obviously we know now she hadn't done. Yeah. Is is gone to a bar, pretty much. Yeah, she just went to a bar with a guy. Yeah, so I don't I don't know what he'd say if he if knew Eno took drugs and nearly killed a child. No, uh, but we're going to find no. out. What he's gonna I, say. I guess we will Spoiler. find out. Yeah. So, um, yeah, yeah. So, so she basically says, you know, it's, it's it's ancient history now. I'm sure it's not a problem, but obviously, it turns out that Ronnie is a very jealous man. He's very controlling and very jealous. Um, boy. <laughs> man, boy, child. Uh, <laughs> Enid says that he blew a fuse uh, when he found out that she was doing homework with another guy the yeah, other day. And that she's scared. Class. She's scared of, yeah, of, of him finding out. Sounds like an absolute prick. He sounds awful. Um, and of course, it's made worse because George... What's going on with George? Um, George is still writing to Enid. In fact, they, they've kept in contact through letters, but it was just because Enid said he's still very mixed up and sad, you know, and they just uh, yeah. stayed friends. Nothing's going on. Um, it was just friendly letters. Basically. Until the last letter. Yeah, so he in the last letter, George said he's coming back for a visit in two weeks and he wants to see her. Yeah, so George is coming to Sweet Valley um, and um, also mentions in the letter that he knows Winston. He says, please, you know, say hi to my good friend Winston. Um, yeah, so Elizabeth says, Enid says she doesn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. uh, she doesn't want to meet him because obviously Ronnie's going to go mental at her. She says that if Ronnie finds <clears throat> out, it will be the ultimate end, <laughs> which sounds like something the doctor would say to the Daleks. Like it's the <laughs> ultimate end, um, yeah. So she's she's terrified of, uh, of of you know Ronnie finding out about George, let alone the fact that George is coming to Sweet Valley. Yeah. So she shows Elizabeth some of the letters as well. Yep. Um, and they just look perfectly normal, perfectly friendly. They're fine. And Liz also at this point does think, yeah, she she sees the letters, but she does think about how bad rumors can be in Sweet Valley, remembering the incident at Kelly's with her quote eternally two-faced twin mm -hmm. which is important because this will come up later when elizabeth will just trust jessica's word regardless again, again. um so he says to liz well, you need to swear not to tell a soul about this and elizabeth swears on a dictionary 
that she won't tell us all. She swears on a dictionary, yes. Um, and it says, which, being a writer, she's never far away from. Of, of course not, of course not. She didn't consider herself an Ernest Hemingway. Not yet, anyway. <laughs> she's working on it. She's working on it. And then they start joking around with each other. Yeah, um, they play fight. And they pretend to smother each other with pillows. Yes, yeah. sounds perfectly yeah. normal behaviour to me. It did, oh, yeah, of course. For teenage girls, especially. Um, but in all the commotion... They don't notice one of George's letters falls onto the floor. Yeah, so it's on the floor of, of Elizabeth's bedroom. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, we cut to the next day where Jessica is bored in class. She's in French class and she's daydreaming of soaking up rays in the bronze wet look one piece she just brought at Foxy Mamas. Yes, yes, Foxy Mamas. Which, uh, like I said to you, it's, it sounds like the kind of place that, like... A 50-year-old uh, who's never gone out drinking since they were a teenager <laughs> is going to go out for a night with the girls for the first time in 25 years. They're going to go to Foxy Mamas. <laughs> it doesn't sound like a place like a 16-year-old No, it shop. doesn't sound like the kind of place that Jessica Wakefield is going to be shopping, but apparently Foxy Mamas. Um, and you also said that later in the books, they're nowhere near as descriptive about the shops they go to. So it's no. weird that this one is like specific. Um, so Winston is in the class and he's staring at her with a lovesick expression. Yes. She catches him and she thinks, yuck. But she still shifts to a more yeah. flattering position. She's like, she thinks she looks at him and she's like, oh, what a perv. But then she's like, but I'll give she him something anyway. I'll make good. myself look really hot for him. She's basic, She's just an attention whore, really. Yeah, yeah. Whoever it's from, she doesn't care. And then um, the teacher calls out Jess because she's not paying attention. Um, and Winston leaps to her defense, saying that she's like Wonder Woman and uh, that's why she's, she's distracted and that she can leap buildings in a single bound. And then Ked Matthews, the school jock, corrects him and says, actually, Winston, that's Superman. And I was like, so who's the bigger nerd? Is Ken Matthews the bigger nerd than Winston? It's the secret nerd. The secret nerd, Ken Matthews. Um, and then Jess goes off into another fantasy yes, about Bruce. About Bruce falling in love with her. And it describes Bruce as fabulously rich, popular, superstar handsome, with ice blue eyes and a cool black Porsche. There they love that would... Porsche, don't they? Yeah. That Porsche is everything. The number plate on the Porsche is One Bruce One. I'm not sure if they've mentioned that yet. I'm not sure if they have, no. You can get t-shirts of One Bruce One. I've on seen the things. t-shirts, they're, I'm kind they're of really tempted. Funny. Yeah, that's going to be your, your birthday present this nice. year. Nice. Um, and the fantasy is there she would be, utterly ravishing, pretending to look shocked that her name had been called. She would glide demurely up to the stage, the merest hint of a tear trembling on her lower lashes, but not enough to smudge her eyeliner. As she bowed her head in humble acceptance of the crown, Bruce would smile and they would drift off onto the dance floor. Yes, yes. Um, so after class... After a fantasy, Lila complains to Jess about Miss Dalton, um, you know, making Jess look like a fool by calling her out in class. And Jess says, nobody makes a fool out of me, especially not a cream puff she like Miss Dalton. She just makes a fool out of herself most of the time. She just makes a fool out of herself. Absolutely. <laughs> so Miss Dalton, the new teacher of uh, Sweet Valley High, young and attractive, um, so naturally... There's a lot of speculation about her, naturally, just because she's a young, attractive female in school. I think there always was about younger teachers in my school. It's not unrealistic, actually. Yeah, it, it's true. Like, we ha- we male, had, like, male or female, if it was a young teacher, there yeah. was always, like, something, something's going on. We had two on. younger teachers, um, a man and a woman, mm-hmm. and it was just constant speculation that they were a couple. Yeah, yeah. Even though they did nothing. It was to, always, always to, the PE teachers as well. It's always the PE teachers. Yeah. Like any new male PE teacher, it was always like, oh my God, there's something going on. Yeah. yeah there's something going on. All the time. Always. Like, oh my God, it's the kind of schools we went to, together. I guess. I don't know. <laughs> I think it's just how, how bored kids are in school. Probably. Um, so yeah, we've got a new teacher, Miss Dalton, and, and, and there's a lot of rumour and speculation going on around her. Um, the rumour is that, uh, that Miss Dalton is uh, dating Ly- Lila's father. I oh, know that that's not a rumor. That's that's the truth. Oh, that's the truth. Oh, sorry, that one's yeah, a fact. Sorry. That's the fact. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. The rumor is that she's dating Ken Matthews. Yes. For, for some insane reason, which we don't really know what it is. <laughs> well, I, I think it's because um, Ken she Matthews told him he did good work or something. He did good work, and Ken Matthews threatened to throw Winston out of the class, and Miss Dalton thanked him. 
Uh, and then that's, that's it proof you know like last time it was like oh my god they're in a house together they must be cheating yeah like, it's like with, that it's like oh there's Mariana proof West. yeah like she, she they gave were laughing compliment. in the car oh my god yeah yeah exactly really so yes uh, Lila um, uh, yeah so Lila's uh, Lila's father is dating uh, Miss Dalton but there are rumours and um, oh that's it yes so, so Lila's father is actually dating Mrs. Dalton and Lila hates her yes Lila thinks she's a gold digger yeah um and so when, when Lila's slagging her off, she says that she's seen her flirting with Ken Matthews. So basically Lila starts the whole Ken Matthews rumour because yeah, she does. someone over here is, tells someone else yeah. and that's where this rumour comes from. It's probably, is it Kara Walker? Or yeah. She's the, 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 uh, the school spreader of, of oh that's rumors. caroline pierce caroline pierce sorry yeah. caroline pierce i knew there was one it was sure someone that involved. was <laughs> um so uh ken matthews the rumor is that ken matthews is dating miss dalton jessica says that like i doubt it because miss dalton is ancient because she's 25 25 <laughs> she's like you wouldn't you wouldn't he wouldn't date someone as ancient as her 25 years old by the way later on we'll get to we'll get to a quote later on apparently like uh, women don't come into their own until they're 30 but men are burnt out practically burnt out by the age of 30 well women are meant to be in their prime when they're in their 30s and men is 20s i've heard right well so, you know i'm feeling pretty burnt out today, i'm in my so prime maybe maybe you're in your and prime you're, i'm just burnt out falling, washed yeah, up you're burnt out yeah so um after this jessica talks to cara walker yeah, because, and Lila rushes off to choir practice. Yeah. Which has never been mentioned before and is never mentioned again. And it doesn't fit her character at no, all, really. I can't imagine Lila at choir practice. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so Kara shows up. Um, and Jessica asks Kara if she could casually try to speak to Ronnie in history class because Ronnie is head of the dance committee. Yes. Um, and she wants Kara to influence him to get kids to vote for her. Mm-hmm. Which I don't, I, I don't really understand how that would work but. i'm not sure how it works either um but yeah so jessica's just yes jessica's just desperate to be queen and she wants also for for bruce to be king it's all part of her intricate plan and Kara says she's got nothing to worry about um she says she says look at the competition it's yeah. enid enid yeah look at enid who the book does say is pretty anyway it's not yeah. like the book makes you know um, for a nerd for for a nerd, she's pretty. But everyone's yeah. pretty. But I think she says that book. Jess is like a million times prettier than Enid. She's like, you're a million times prettier than Enid. Um, and uh, at that point, as soon as Kara even mentions Enid, Jessica loses it again, saying that Elizabeth has dreadful taste in friends and that she, she just hates Enid. She hated Enid in book one and she hates her even more now. Yeah, she calls Enid a little creep. She does, yeah. And she says that Ronnie might get people to vote for Enid because they're a couple. Yes. Which so, really makes sense because I don't think Enid would even be in the running otherwise. Uh, yeah, I think. Surely her fair. biggest competition would be like Lila, Cara, Jessica, Elizabeth. Elizabeth. Yeah, Elizabeth. I mean, especially considering Elizabeth and Jessica are identical. Yeah, Elizabeth's probably being with more of a shot than Enid. Yeah. But um, maybe it's because Ronnie is head of the committee, so. Yeah, she yeah. has this idea that that maybe he's gonna, gonna like, he's gonna do something to make sure that Enid wins in a gesture of love and affection. Um, he'd probably be too jealous to let her on the stage. Yeah, probably. Except yeah, he's he. Yeah, I mean, he does seem like an awful guy. Yeah. to be honest. Um, but anyway, this conversation is cut short because Jess sees Bruce and uh, laments about how beautiful he is. Oh my god! She says, Bruce. "Have you got the quote or?" Is she- um, I don't think she says- I have, yeah. I've, I've got one quote. I don't know if it's the same it's quote. Go for it. Got. I bet it's the same quote. So I've got the description of him. Yeah, it's the same um, one. <laughs> he's wearing off-white cords and a heather blue sweater that matches his eyes. And that makes him sound like he just, I don't know, it just sounds like he's got like a rich country club boy yeah. kind of outfit on. Yeah. You know, white cords and a heather blue sweater. But she also says that he looks airbrushed. Oh, I, I haven't got that one. Oh, yeah. She said he looks airbrushed. Is that a good thing? Um, well, I guess it's meant to be like he looks he's like perfect. he's in a magazine, oh. like he's perfect airbrushed, you uh, know. Um, it says Jess's eyes rivet on the glorious spectacle of Bruce climbing the stairs with the loose limbed grace of a young lion. <laughs> that was the word that made me laugh. Um, so, of course, Imagine Simba from The Lion King or something, like climbing up, climbing climbing up stairs. the stairs. Like he's climbing up them on all fours. Yeah, like why would you describe someone walking upstairs as 
like the li- loose limbed grace of a young lion I don't know because they <laughs> lions are on all fours right yeah so just, just crawling up the stairs I just find that really um, funny so of course Jess runs to catch up with him like a bullet um, homing towards the target apparently. yeah yeah she sounds terrifying she does sound terrifying um and immediately immediately as he was in double love to Elizabeth Bruce is immediately a dick to Jessica as soon as he sees her and he's got a good, another good nickname as he well he has so in, in Double Love, he called Elizabeth Roadhouse Rhoda. Yep. And I think he called her Bar Crawler as well. He did, yeah. Um, he calls Jessica. He says, well, well, if it isn't Bo Peep, lost any sheep lately? And Jessica laughs as if it's the funniest thing that's any, that anyone's ever said. Like, it's just yeah. the most hilarious joke ever. And she says, I don't know what you're talking about. I'm the loneliest girl in the whole school. I don't even have a date for the dance. Just casually slip that in there. Just just chuck that in there casually. But it goes wrong because Bruce says, why don't you go with Winston? Yeah. Um, uh, to which Jessica says he's the last person she would ever want to go to the dance with and that he's a cartoon. <laughs> uh, so Jessica continues to flirt with Bruce. And then he he wants to leave. He's mm. he's not interested really. Uh, so she comes up with a plan, a last a, a last, last minute, minute plan. Yeah. She pretends she's lost her gold. Lav- lav- I can't pronounce the word. Lavali. I'm Lavalier. not sure. Uh, I didn't write that one down. But it's a necklace. Basically. Lavalier, I think. Lavalier. It is. It's something French. Mm-hmm. Lavalier necklace. Um, she pretends she's lost it, and she asks him to help her find it. And she she goes into like a massive fake panic, like oh my god, you my know, parents are going to kill me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and and, and he, Bruce basically just looks around. He's like, I can't see it. Yeah, he says, "Listen, love, I'm sure it will turn up," <laughs> and then just walks away. <laughs> but of course, poor Winston was listening, um, and he comes and he's like, "Oh, I'll help you look for it." He goes way over the top. Yeah, about it. he's completely. He accidentally over the steps top. on her toe because he's stumbling around looking for it. Yeah. And then um, she leaves him crawling around on his hands and knees, scouring the stairway for an imaginary necklace. Yeah, yeah. So then later that day, Jess comes home in a black mood because of, you know, what happened with Bruce. Didn't go the way she wanted. Um, And she asks Alice, perfect Alice, who we also get a description of in this book. Um, she asks Alice where Liz is and Alice says that she's with Enid. Um, and uh, so Alice know, is her mum. Alice, sorry, yes, Alice. Didn't Alice, know that already. Uh, yes, of course. She was in Double Love, so I'm yeah. assuming that we're at this point we know who Alice is. But yeah, Alice, Alice Wakefield, uh, who basically they say could be um, mistaken for one of the twins. She looks so young and youthful, despite being their mother. Yeah, it says they share all American good looks and honey coloured hair. Yes, yeah. Um, so she asks where Liz is, and she says that um, she's with Enid, uh, which completely disgusts Jess. Um, and she says that um, Enid's turning herself into a Liz clone, and that she's positively revolting. <laughs> um, yeah, and she calls Enid a creepy nerd. A creepy nerd, yes. Um, and Alice accuses her of being jealous of Enid. And Jessica says she doesn't care if Liz wants to ruin her reputation by hanging around with such a twerp. Yeah. I love her insults. Yeah, she also says... Twerp, um, creepy nerd, little creep. Little creep, yeah. (laughs) Cartoon. She says um, that she doesn't care who Liz is friends with and that she could be friends with a one-eyed hippo for all she cares. Because Jess is Liz's best friend. Even though she treats her like Even though she's absolutely horrible to her. Yeah, and just uses her for whatever she wants. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then Jessica just bursts into tears and runs upstairs. Yeah. She goes into Elizabeth's room. Because um, it's the tidy room. Yeah, she prefers Elizabeth's room to her own because it's tidier. Mm-hmm. And then we find out that her room is nicknamed the Hershey Bar because she painted it brown. Sounds absolutely who, disgusting. Who? Well, I mean, who paints their room brown anyway? Yeah. But Especially what a teenage, teenage girl, girl yeah. paints their room? I Someone mean, who's quite girly like Jessica as well. I'm quite a boring person. At 36 no. years old. I'm I'm burnt out old man at 36 <laughs> years old. I haven't painted my room brown. Why would I, you know? Please don't paint your room brown. Well, we might need a Hershey room in the house. Yeah, Liz says that her bedroom looks like a cross between a mud wrestling pit and the bargain table at Kmart. <laughs> Um, so of course in the in the room her room sounds not what I imagined it no not at all I imagine it'd be sort of purple with lots of posters of bands yeah or, or like a um, teenage girl like makeup around and yeah or like know. a pastel pink I wouldn't imagine it to be, be brown no no it doesn't suit her at all it's bizarre um, uh, but yeah of course so then in in uh, Liz's room 
while Jess is there, um, she finds the letters. Yeah, she sees a piece of paper sticking out from under the bed mm. because she's a nosy bitch. Yeah. She's like, oh, what's that? And it's, it's one of the letters from George. And uh, she smiles evilly as she uh, she begins reading the letter. Yeah, so I want to read this letter out, actually. Oh, yes, go on. It's a good, uh, it is a good letter. So, so I'm just going to find the beginning of it. Oh, that's okay. Um, so, yeah, Jess, um, again, so far has been like a... A complete bitch <laughs> since since book one. Yeah, so I've got continues. it. Oh, got it's it? only part of the letter, but it says, Dear Enid, being so down lately, I can't seem to get my head on straight the way you have. I can't stop thinking about the past and trying to figure out how it all snowballed so quickly. It's like the time we took all those bennies and before we knew it, we were cooking along in the GTO doing 80 or 90. And that's what it gives us. But what is a benny? I've no idea. It's some kind of drug. I, I'm assuming it's a it's a drug of some kind. I mean, probably a made up drug. Yeah, Benadryl. Yeah. So I think I googled it ages ago. Oh, was it genuinely I that? And I, I think all I could find was Benadryl. <laughs> okay. so if that's what they were taking, that's well. Oh, they they said they were stoned, didn't yeah. they? Effectively, so it's I don't kind know. Kind of American slang. It must be. We'll have yeah, to find be. out. Let us know if you know what a yeah. Benny is. Tell us. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so she finds the letters and uh, she has an evil smile on her face as she reads. Um, and then she goes to Ned's photocopy or Xerox machine and um, takes a copy of the letter. Yeah, of course she does. Mm. Um, so then we catch Todd and Liz are at the cinema with Enid and Ronnie. Yes, they're on a double date. Sounds like a really shit group of people. It's like honest. the worst, isn't it? Boring Todd and Liz, jealous Enid, a uh, jealous Ronnie. And poor Enid. Poor Enid, yeah. Yeah. She's probably the best one out of those, those, she is, I think. those people, actually. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so Todd comments that something's clearly <clears throat> wrong um, because uh, Ronnie and Enid just seem off. Ronnie seems really off with Enid. Um, and uh, he thinks that it's, 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 it's wrong and that Ronnie clearly doesn't trust Enid um, because Ronnie was really jealous of even the waiter in uh, Guido's restaurant earlier. Yeah, so Enid was trying to make sure he didn't put anchovies on a pizza. Yes. And Ronnie got mad. And that was apparently enough for Ronnie to, to fly off the handle. You're getting a picture of what Ronnie's like by now, I think. Yeah, it's funny because in the last uh, the last review, you were like, oh, Ronnie's horrible. And I was like, well, he is pretty horrible in this book, but I've not really seen it. This book, oh my God, he's terrible. He's awful. Um, so Liz goes to find Enid, uh, who's crying in the toilets about Ronnie. Um, she feels that uh, Ronnie is being off with her because he may know about George. She's really worried that he might have found out somehow. Um, and Liz says that she doubts that. It's probably just something else. So after the date, uh, he, Ronnie, takes Enid to Miller's Point. Yeah, he says he wants to park up for a little while. Park up at so Miller's we... Point. And as we established in the first book, Miller's Point is a place where you park up to do a certain thing. Yeah, so Miller's Point was already full of cars with steamy windows, it says. Yeah. Um, as soon as they park up, he lunges at her, kissing her roughly, so she's left gasping for breath. She's alarmed and pushes him away. He apologises, and then he puts on a tape of loud, throbbing rock instead of the soft, romantic stuff he usually plays. Yeah, so he basically thrusts himself on her, basically tries to assault her, yeah. and then and when then she pushes him away, he just puts loud rock music on and is really off with her. Um he says that he he tells her he can't make the dance because he needs to look after his dad. That's right. Yeah. So he tries. He basically tries to assault her. When she says no, he puts loud rock music on and says, oh, "I can't come to the dance. I've got to go and help my dad. Can't do it." Um, and so Enid knows that's a lie because yes. she knows that I can't remember exactly what it says, but some something like she knows that his dad's got other staff that help when he goes away. Yeah. Store, whatever the store is, I don't know. And then it all comes out. Um. He we, he starts kissing her again after that and getting pushy again. Mm. She tells him to back off, um, and she starts trying to you know just start a conversation with him, like casual conversation. Yeah. So she starts talking about the Miss Dalton and Ken rumor, and then he makes a snide comment to her um, that people are two faced when it comes to love, and then he tries to get rapey again. <laughs> Uh, she starts crying and he says, what's the matter? He said, well, you, you've tried to rape me like three times. <laughs> yeah, I'm a bit upset, time to be honest. Um, 
he says, what's the matter? I don't rate up there with old Georgie boy. You're not going to give me what you were giving him. Um, and he says, you know, she's not as pure as she's been making out. Mm. Um, and he knows about the letters. Yeah. So what a strange reaction. You find out your girlfriend is writing to an ex. So you, you try, try to and rape, rape her. three times. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's okay. the weirdest reaction to that is a pretty weird reaction. I've ever heard. <clears throat> Um, and then he tells her he's taking her home. Yeah, he he basically says <clears throat> Enid says he has trust issues, um, and he no says that they're over. He says they're over, and he's going to drive her home. And they drive home in silence. And Enid thinks that the nightmare has finally come true. He's turned from uh, Doctor Jekyll into Mister Hyde. So obviously heartbroken over Ronnie, Enid comes to the conclusion it can only be Liz. Because the only person that knew about the letters was Liz. And that Liz must have told Ronnie. Um, yeah, so then we cut to the Wakefield's house. Yeah. And Jessica's flying around her room like a hyperactive bumblebee. She's with Kara getting ready for a party at Lila's house. Uh, and she says that Liz could have been invited to the party if she tried harder with Lila. And Elizabeth says, Jess, uh, says Lila is a phony. And Jess says she's no more phony than Enid is. Yeah, which I, I I don't think that, uh, but I do like the pun. By the way, she she makes a good joke. Um, so what pun? Uh, well, she's <laughs> what have I missed? <laughs> she says she's not as phony as the, as someone beginning with an E, and she doesn't mean E T. Oh yeah, get it? Because <laughs> phone home, phony. Yeah, I didn't pick up on that. Uh, it was good. That made me laugh. Well done, Jessica. That's a good funny. Um, but yeah, basically, uh, she she makes out that Enid's just as phony, which I don't buy at all. Like nothing that Enid's done would seem. She's just that hinting that on phone. because of the, the, letters. the letters. Yeah, yeah. She? Which is a bad idea, given that her whole scheme relies on her not getting found out. Um, but yeah, so uh, turns out that Bruce only wants to go to Lila's because Bruce is going to be there and she wants to impress him. Um, which is weird because, like, the the Patmans and the Fowlers don't get on at all. So it's kind of weird that Bruce is even going to this party. But I guess, you know... Everyone goes to Lila's I guess parties. everyone goes to Lila's parties, yeah. Everyone in theory. who's anyone, apparently, it mm. says her. So then Liz asks if she looks fat in uh, in her sweater dress. And Jessica Jess- asks. Oh, was it Jessica? Oh, I got that wrong way around. I thought it was Elizabeth this time. Yes, yeah, so it must be right. It must be Jessica. Um, and then obviously um, we get the same thing we got in Double Love, where Elizabeth is then upset. The police are coming to arrest us. Um, <laughs> then gets obviously upset because they're twins. They're identical twins. Um, so, uh, yeah, so, um, Liz says that she's, she's worried about Enid and they haven't talked since the date. Um, she tries calling and, um... Um, oh, so first she... Oh, you might be getting to this bit. No, that's okay, go for it. So, so Liz, Elizabeth tells Jessica, um, what had happened with the letters and everything. Yes, yes, she does, yeah. Elizabeth goes to her room and worries about Enid. Um... Yeah, she tries calling her. Oh, yeah, she does try calling her yeah. first, sorry, yeah. Um, and gets gets Enid on the phone. She says that her and Ronnie have split, and it must be Liz's fault because he knew about the letters. Or she knew about the letters, sorry. She's the only one that knew. Um, so then Liz is upset after the phone call, and, yeah, then she tells Jessica. Yes. This is a lot of back and forth. This There's search, a lot of back and forth, yeah. getting on my nerves. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So basically, yeah. So Enid breaks friends with uh, with Liz over the phone, and uh, Liz bursts into tears and confides in Jessica. And Jessica basically says that she knew Enid was a piece of shit the whole entire time, and you know <laughs> yeah, she's how awful. Fair it is that Enid's accused her of such a thing. Yes, and that Enid's um, so horrible for ever thinking such a thing. And that Elizabeth is better off without her. Yeah, yeah, basically. Passing the whole thing off as if it nothing to do with Jessica and Enid's just horrible and that she was right about Enid the whole time. She should, you know, um, Liz should have listened to Jessica the whole time. So then we go to the party. We do. Um, where Lila's trying to get Jessica to drink some red wine that her father brought back from France yeah, and that she stole from his wine cellar. Expensive French red wine from the wine cellar. Um, and um, it, makes, uh, it makes her feel very elegant. Makes Jessica feel... She said she feels very elegant as she held the uh, the glass mm. of red. At the Fowler Mansion, with its magnificent, magnificently landscaped grounds, and apparently it makes the Wakefield's house seem like a shack. Yes, yeah. Um, of course, at the party, Lila brings up her father not paying enough attention to her because she's spending he's spending all of his time with Miss Dalton. Um, and, uh, you know, quickly, 
the uh, the conversation changes to Enid and Ronnie. Yeah. So we, we get Dana Larson. From the droids. From the droids showing up. So the droids are Sweet Valley's... Um, <laughs> Sweet Valley's answer to the Rolling Stones. Sweet Valley's answer to Rolling Stones, apparently, yeah. according to this. Yeah. yeah. So that they're a band from the school. that They were in book one. Yes. They're in, they're in almost every book. And Dana um, Larson is only drinking Pepsi to maintain her pipes. Yeah, she needs to protect her pipes. Um, mm. And it says the droids had a reputation for being pretty wild, but Dana was fairly straight under her outrageous clothes. So I love her outfit. Um, she's wearing tight black velvet jeans, a sparkly pink, sparkly pink leg warmers, and a purple satin blouse. That's quite a good look. I think I'd I like be mates it. with Dana. If yeah, I, if yeah. I lived in Sweet Valley. We uh, do. You think we get comp tickets to the droid gigs? Well, the droid gigs are basically in the school gym. They're, they're like in so. every every dance ever. Yeah, just the school dance. Because she even says here, she's like, you know, it, the the dance isn't just going to be any dance. It's going to be the best dance ever because they've got the best band there, the droids. But it's like the droids played the dance that happened yesterday. Yeah, and they, they go to the school. So it's like, it's like you play every dance. Um, in fact, I have actually got a note here before I got to that point in the book where I said, I bet they're playing the dance. <laughs> and yeah, like not not two, three paragraphs later. Um, so yeah, they're, they're talking about Ronnie and Ronnie is at the party and he looks really upset and angry. Good. Um, but Jessica doesn't care because she's waiting for Bruce. Yeah. But then Lila tells her that Bruce isn't coming because mm-hmm. he's, he's going to a college party instead. So she says, you know, Bruce is always hanging out with older women. Do you know the girl he's taking to the dance is 19? Ancient. What? Why? But why would a nineteen-year-old go to the dance with a sixteen-year-old kid? Well, I agree. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> if I was nineteen and a sixteen-year-old asked me out I'd, and asked me to their <laughs> high school dance, you know, at this point you're at uni when you're nineteen, I'd, I'd be like, no. Well, I off. think I think it's a. It's really weird. But B, it's the school's fault. Because as we learn later, they will let anyone attend it with anyone to the school dance. Doesn't matter. Yeah. Even if you're not part of the school, you can just come I to the school so, dance. I guess, though, actually, Bruce is, is loaded. He is loaded, so yeah. maybe he can get all the, all the older girls. The older girls, yeah. Yeah, with his black Porsche. Older girls love the black Porsche. That's, one Bruce one. Is. One Bruce one. Um, so Lila thinks that 19-year-olds are ancient and questions why they'd be hanging around with uh, with uh, anyone of Bruce's age at the dance. Well, yeah, I agree with half of that statement. I agree with half of that statement <laughs> as well. <laughs> um, so Jessica is heartbroken about Bruce not being there, but changes her plans and instead moves in on Ronnie. She mentions that he looks sad and that she should have brought he should have brought Enid. Yeah, she's trying to flirt with him and he's irresponsive to that. Yes. So then she brings up Enid. Uh, she starts slagging Enid off, and she says he'd be better off dating Benedict Arnold. Yes. Who is Benedict Arnold? Um, I had to look it up. He was a defecting military officer from the Revolutionary War. So I'm, I'm I have sure, absolutely no idea why Jessica would get that I'm reference. I'm sure he's referenced whatsoever. Um, in a couple of the books. Oh, really? Yeah. It and might I've be. I mean, was. it might be a bigger thing for American, you know, school. Yeah, but I, I can't imagine that a girl like Jessica would even understand that reference. No. Like, what are we talking about? But yeah, sure. Um, so of course it gets worse, and the reason, another reason why Ronnie is so upset is because it turns out that someone, Jessica, someone, someone, left a photocopy of George's letter to Enid in Ronnie's locker. Somebody with a f- access to a photocopier. Yeah. Um. So she feigns innocence and concern, does. um, and she's like, "Oh, you know, who would do such a thing? Who would ever do such a thing?" Um. And um, then she says, well, since I don't have a date and you don't have a date, why don't we go to the dance together? Just as friends, of course. And uh, Ronnie agrees as friends to go to the dance because neither of them have dance partners. Yeah, she's like, well, if I can't. If I can't um, go to dance with Bruce, I can still ruin Enid's life. Yeah, yeah, I'll just continue to ruin Enid's life. It's fine. Yeah. Uh, so Liz comes to school the next day and uh, finds that the gossip is all about Miss Dalton and Ken Matthews, which has overshadowed the Enid Ronnie. It's Miss Dalton drama. and Ken Matthews thing. It's just such a rubbish B plot, isn't it? It is. Yeah, it really. Some is. of the books have got really good B plots. They're really funny and and, and I enjoyed the B plot of last one. time. Yeah, the Mariana cheating and, and, the, and the football pitch and all that yeah. stuff. I enjoyed all that. This this one, this I'm B-plot, like, oh. there's not even a story to it. It's just no, and it gets dropped. 
like this B plot, they just drop it at the end. They don't yeah. even really ever resolve it. No. Like it, it like nothing to resolve. Miss Dalton just turns up at the dance and dances with Mr. Collins. Is like okay, fine. Don't spoil it. Oh well, well you know we'll get there. In a <laughs> but yeah. Uh, so it's all been overshadowed. Uh, it's all overshadowed Enid and Ronnie's drama. Um, so apparently Miss Dalton is tutoring Ken Matthews, which is where the rumours have come from, along with them paying a te- paying compliment in class. I bet Ken is loving the rumours. Yeah, I bet he a is. Sixteen-year-old kid, like a sixteen-year-old jock. Yeah, yeah. Being spread by these, like, dating a 25-year-old. Yeah, so Liz, Liz's uh, friend Caroline points out that Ken isn't exactly a kid and points out that women don't come into their prime until they're in their 30s, whereas men are burned out by then. He's a kid, he's 16. 16, yeah. He's, in, in he's America, actually that's, legally in America, a child. that's illegal. Yeah, he's legally a child and like, this is statutory rape. Like, she for that. Uh, yeah, it, it, That'd it's, be, it's... like, front page headline. Oh, yeah, she'd definitely lose her job. And it, this is one of the things. student. So they're like, apparently Miss Dalton is uh, came into to class the other day looking upset. And the rumour is that she's going to be fired because old Chrome Dome, who's like head principal, right? He's principal. Uh, old Chrome Dome has a thing about teachers and morals. I'm like, yeah, dating a child. Yes, I think he should definitely have an issue about with that. It, He's know? just got a weird yeah. thing about it. I don't understand. Apparently he he wants the teachers in the school to have morals. Yeah, apparently that's just a it's weird thing. It's one of thing. his things. It's one of his weird things. Um... <laughs> Oh, yeah, Liz, Liz is just asking Mrs. Dalton um, what's going on. And Caroline says, you know, you, you can't do that um, because... You can't really, can you? No, you can't do that. And also, it's not something that, that Miss Dalton is going to want published in the Oracle because, of course, the Eisenhower's she, she column... Wants, she wants an item for the Eisenhower's. She does, yeah. You know, Liz is, you know, she's she's a shrewd... Which 25-year-old teacher is, yeah. has been seen uh, dating the star jock? Yeah. Well... Right? It turns out, unfortunately, someone's beat her to it because Miss Dalton comes to class and what's written um, on the yeah. chalkboard? Um, um, you say, I, I haven't read really it It says... It says something like she's a slag or something, doesn't it? Don't know what a French kiss is? Then ask Ken Matthews. Oh, that's it, yeah. And it's all written in capitals <laughs> on, the white, on the chalkboard. So Miss Dalton, of course, upon seeing this, runs out crying into the hallway. So I was getting confused then because I read a, the senior year book I recently read, Sweet Valley Senior Year, um, Jessica goes into the class and it says Jessica Wakefield is a slag on the on the chalkboard. <laughs> so that's why I thought it said Miss Dalton is a slag. I didn't just get. <laughs> well, that I mean, from, it basically does, head. but I'm getting the, the, I the actually, jokes confused. Actually, I think this one basically says Miss Dalton is a pedo. Uh, is basically what this is saying <laughs> yeah. on the whiteboard. But, um, yeah, but yeah. In, in senior year, Jessica gets bullied quite a lot. Yeah, you said she has a really bad time, right? Yeah, she's no longer Mrs. Yeah. Mrs. Mrs. Perfect. God damn. So Liz tries to speak to Enid, but Enid is having none of it. Yeah, and Jess, Jess is like, oh, I'll talk to Enid for you. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? Um, so the yeah. last thing you want. Uh, and she says to Enid, I know how you feel. Well, actually, I've never been dumped, but I can imagine. <laughs> you must feel awful. Yeah. Um, I should say as well that, um, that... Yeah, so let... Jess and Liz meet at lunch and, and Jess says that she'll go speak to Enid. Um, Liz briefly is like, why would you do this? You don't even like Enid. And then Jess convinces her to where Liz feels ashamed for even doubting her sister's motives. Yeah, she, she does sure. that every time. Uh, and then, as you said, yeah, so, so Jess catches up with Enid. Yeah, and she says she's sure people won't believe everything Ronnie's been saying about her. So Enid says, uh, so like, what has Ronnie been saying about me? Mm-hmm. And she says, believe me, you don't want to know. I couldn't even repeat half of it. Yeah, like, it just makes it sound absolutely horrendous. And then and then she says, like, Elizabeth probably meant, probably didn't mean to hurt you, but it probably just slipped out. So she's making it sound like Elizabeth did. Basically did it. Did it, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah she's making it sound like that. Um, and, of course, Enid says she will never forgive Liz, even if she lives to be 199 I um, thought you were going to say 137 then. No, but we will get to that later. That is mentioned in the script. It is mentioned. <laughs> we'll get to it. Um, so Jessica even convinced... She, like, she even convinces herself that she's not doing anything wrong. So yeah, it, she she justifies it to herself, it doesn't says she? she thinks to herself that Elizabeth's better off without Enid anyway and that she's doing her a favour in the long run. Yeah, yeah, it's just all a matter of perspective. Like she, she has no awareness of, of how 
horrible she is. She genuinely thinks she's a good person. This is why I say she genuinely comes across in these early books like she's a psychopath. Like she she like believes what she's doing. She thinks she's doing the right thing. She doesn't has zero empathy, barely any empathy. I think she does a little sometimes for Liz, she will have a bit of empathy, but like very rarely. She's she's pretty much got no empathy. She just does what she wants. She justifies it to herself. Um and she's just like steadfast in her crazy opinions. Um but yeah, so she basically talks herself into thinking she's doing the right thing here. Um, and of course, later that night, Jess tells Liz. She says, yeah, I'm going to the dance with Ronnie. Um, and when Liz is absolutely disgusted, she says, no, no, no. <laughs> I'm going to the dance with Ronnie for Enid. And the plan is that when Enid... Or so when Ronnie sees Enid at the dance and he sees how lovely Enid looks, he'll realise what he's missing. That that's that's the plan. Yeah, she says so she'd hate to think of anyone she'd hate anyone to think she was going with Ronnie for her own selfish, selfish reasons. Purposes. Yeah, sure. Um And then Liz ap- apologizes to her again and says, Oh, I know you're only trying to help, it's okay. I know you're and only it- trying to help. Please forgive me. And Jess is like, Well, I'll forgive you if you give me that bag. Mm-hmm. So uh She's not only convinced Liz that she's trying to help Enid by stealing her boyfriend and taking him to the dance, or ex-boyfriend taking him to the dance, but also cons Liz out of her beaded bag, uh, which she's going to take to the dance, because apparently it suits Jess's outfit more than Liz's. Um, And then she also tells Elizabeth that Enid's been saying horrible things about her behind her back. Yeah. So basically, just to cover all bases and to completely fuck Enid over... She basically, it's like I'm gonna break, break. I'm gonna take your boyfriend to the dance. Yep. I'm gonna stop you from being queen, and I'm gonna also ruin your relationship with your best friend. Yeah. She just wants to ruin Enid's life. Yeah, yeah. That's all it's about. It's just yeah. I'm just gonna ruin Enid's life, and uh, she, I don't think she even wants Ronnie. No. She, she just like literally is just like no. I'm gonna do this. Just to spite Enid. I guess she's like, well, then Enid might not even come to the dance and then I'm guaranteed to be queen, I guess, is maybe the, the logic she's Yeah, using. she thinks if she goes with Ronnie, you know, she'll end up being queen, I think. Yeah. And um, ruining his life in the process. Like, win-win bonus. Yeah. So then the next day, Liz confides in uh, Mr. Collins, who runs the Oracle, meet, met him in, in Double Love. Um, he's described as a taller Robert Redford. And... Um, Mr. Collins suggests that, you know, she should think about people who may have a motive. Um, which is funny because Liz doesn't even consider Jessica at all and instead jumps to the conclusion that it's probably Winston and that Winston did it for a bit of attention because, as we know, George knows Winston. So she assumes maybe Winston did it because Winston likes having a bit of attention. Um, Mr. Collins also makes a point of saying they are not going to run any news stories on Mrs. Dalton or Miss Dalton um, because it's, it's oh. untrue and upsetting <laughs> to her. It's not just upsetting. I mean, this is like criminal. Yeah. Like you're you're going to you can't put court to jail. Paper. Like, I mean, yeah, imagine that if they actually published that in the school paper. Um, but of course, everyone just suspects it's not because he's trying to save someone's career and their life. It's like, no, no, no. He's just doing it because he fancies Miss Dalton. Well, they're both young teachers, aren't they? They're both young teachers. People are going to talk. Well, they're not young teachers. She's a young teacher. He's practically ancient at this point and burned out. (laughs) Yeah, of course, yeah. He's past his prime. He's past his prime. So, um, apparently no one has seen Ken for days, um, and they suspect that he's got um, mono from kissing Miss Dalton. That's that's the school rumour. But she hasn't got mono. No. But apparently that's that's the rumour, is that he's caught Mono from kissing Miss Dalton. I think a better rumour would be if he, he was locked up in her underground sex dungeon or something. Yeah, yeah. And she keeps all the other kids. Would well, you know, <laughs> if this book was written later in the series, based on what you've said, that might be like yeah. what they come up with. Yeah, the storylines get crazier and crazier. Yeah, yeah. Um, so Liz goes and talks to Winston. Um, she says that he knows he knows George. Um and uh, Winston basically says that, no, you know, George has turned his life around and that Enid's turned her life around and that he would never tell anyone about the letters. Winston's lovely in this book, by the way, apart from being really over the top about the necklace thing. Yeah, he's just, he's just a lovable geek. Yeah, he's nice. 
Winston doesn't know anything about it. No, he doesn't even know about the rumours, which I thought was no. a nice touch, actually, because it's like he's so nerdy and so outcast that he's yeah, not no even aware of... Like, the whole school's talking about it yeah. and Winston knows Although his nothing. best friend is Todd Wilkins, who yeah. is another jock who's friends with Ken. Yeah, so. yeah, that's true. Uh, so then we get to the night of the dance. Yay. Yeah, we're um, here. And Alice says uh, that they can't go to the, the twins can't go to the dance until they've cleaned their rooms. Um, yes. And then Jessica and says it will take her 137 years to clean go. her room. We've done it, guys. We uh, we have 137 again. Um, so yeah, if you didn't listen to our last podcast, every book they mention number 137 at least once. And I have googled I and tried to find out why. Cannot find a reason. Yeah. Uh, so Liz gets on with cleaning her bedroom. Of course she does. Of course, I mean, but, but they make a point of saying she's only got a couple of things to pick up because yeah, her room is basically up, like, perfect. Move one, put one pen back in a pot. Yeah, yeah. Um, move, move a dictionary. Well, it's never far from her. Never far from her, actually. Yeah. yeah. Um, so she, when she's cleaning, she finds one of Ina's letters under the bed, mm-hmm. and she realizes what's happened. It all falls into place with her reporter journalist investigative journalist she's such skills. a good investigator she's yeah. finally figured out that maybe the sister who completely screwed her over like a day or so ago and basically claimed that her now boyfriend raped her or tried to rape her sorry um the woman that nearly so they stole a car and nearly run her over the woman that went to a pub with a guy and then blamed elizabeth when she got in trouble with the police and basically blamed her sister turns out She's done it again. She's the villain of the piece, and it's all come into into. It's all finally out now. She knows now. Of course, the letters on the floor. The only other person is that it's it must be Jessica. I'm surprised that, that Liz is so stupid. I'm surprised she didn't try and like blame Alice. She's like, oh my god, it was Alice <laughs> yeah. Wakefield this whole entire Jessica. time. Oh my god, it was Ned. <laughs> it was Ned that done it. Um, yeah. So finally, she's realised that. Yeah, it's it's Jessica. Um. We also get Enid visiting Mrs. Dalton. So, yeah, I love this bit. I, like, I was going to say, absolute... this is my favourite part of the book. This was really nice. I, I, oh, I wasn't, I wasn't going to say that. I was going to say it was fucking ridiculous. Yeah. Oh, I thought it was quite nice, <laughs> but, uh, you know. So, for some, ins- in- some insane reason, yeah. Enid's turned up at Mrs. Dalton's house. Like, Actually just turned why up at would, How would you know where a teacher lives? <laughs> why would you turn up at their house anyway? Uh, well, um, I think... It's uh, ridiculous. Yeah, well, she's like like Enid's like um, what's his name from book one? She she keeps a tab on all of the the hot women. Like Rick Andover. Sweet, yeah, Rick Andover. She's keeping keeps tabs. Tab on, on, keeps tab on all live. the all the hot women are in Sweet Valley. <laughs> Enid knows where they all are. So yeah, she's turned up at Miss Dalton's house, and they have a heart and to heart. Also, this isn't going to do anything for for rumors that Miss Dalton's like involved with students. No, no, this is not. Like, just shows up at her house, and as she well. she like welcomes her in wearing her dressing yeah. gown. I know. Like, yeah, <laughs> like uh <laughs> It's getting a bit racy now, steady on. Um, she she confide, confides in Miss Dalton she about does. what's happened. Yeah. Um, it's just as if, you, the, you know, the first person you'd think of to go to would be a, a teacher at their house. Yeah. If you're having a problem with one of your friends. I mean, this is Enid. She's a bit weird, but... Even so. Yeah. She, she has other friends, though, right? I know. I mean, like, there are she other people other she could friends, have... yeah. You know, she could have spoken to Winston or someone. Well, the, the, been... other, the other nerd, Winston. <laughs> but also, like, when you think about it, Winston knows George. So, like, yeah. Winston would be the obvious person to be, like, confiding in, you know? It's like he knows both of them. He seems like a really loyal friend to both of them. Mm. Why, why wouldn't you have spoken to Winston? Yeah. Now I'll go see Miss Dalton, who's, by the way, dealing with a load of crap herself right yeah. now. I'll just go and pile my crap on top. But um, Miss Dalton is good, and she she advises Ina to listen to Liz. Yeah, and she says that there must be some kind of explanation. There must be a reason. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they talk about the dance, and Miss Dalton says that Ina should should still go, um, and Ina says like, yeah, you, you know, you should go as well. Mm. But she says she can't, um, and she says that she's considering residing over at the Ken rumors <laughs> before she gets carted off to prison. Yeah, um, Ina tells her that Ina's like, well, you can't tell me to go and hold my head high. If you're but, not going to do the same. you're not going to do the same. Yeah. Um, and then she 
has a tantrum and runs runs away from the house. Basically, yeah, she just runs out of the house. So now, yeah. so now basically just to tally now this the up. Na- the neighbours will be like, well, we saw a student had running a student, out of the house crying the other day. The student yeah. turned up, you let her in wearing a dressing gown, then she ran out screaming <laughs> yeah. and crying. Yeah. <laughs> just just to be clear, worse that's, that's worse. what we're doing right now. Uh, after all the rumours of Ken. Um, so uh, later that night, um, Enid is getting ready for the dance. Yeah, so she decides she is going to go. Yes. Um, yeah. She's getting ready to dance, and her mum t- for the dance, and her mum tells her there's someone at the door. Uh, so she immediately thinks, "Oh my god, it's Ronnie." Yeah, but um, it's not Ronnie. Someone better than Ronnie. Way, way better than Ronnie. The it biggest, wouldn't be hard. The biggest twist that no one saw coming in this book. Yeah, who, who is it? Who could it possibly be? It is a tower of tanned muscle topped by a gorgeous <laughs> white smile and the sexiest eyes that Enid had ever been hypnotized by. It is George. Yeah, George. He's is, turned his life around and he's grown a foot. Yeah, and he's dressed in a suit that made him look even more irresistible. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh so George is here. Um and and is now gorgeous and, and perfect in every way. And probably not a jealous prick. No, yeah, and hopefully who, not a jealous prick. Someone who's, who's actually who's thankful. gonna try and rape her three times in one night. So Yeah, well I mean you've read further ahead in these books than I have. I mean you might do. Seems like most of the guys in Sweet Valley are pretty awful. <laughs> yeah, they've all tried to rape someone at least. <laughs> yeah, once. it seems that way. Um so George says that that Winston told him um, about the trouble she's been having. Um, he says that the the letters got him through addiction, um, and you know if it wasn't for for her letters, he doesn't addiction think he to would Benny's have, the addiction to to Benelin. Um, if yeah, the addiction to cough medicine, and um, if if it wasn't for her letters, he never would have got through it. And he never would have got clean. He sorted his life out. He's gorgeous now, and he asks her to the dance. Yeah, and he, hand, he hands her a small white florist box with a dewy white orchid corsage in, and he kisses her, sending waves of pleasure rippling up her spine. <laughs> Sounds really lovely. So at this point I wrote, can anyone go to this dance? I thought this was a school dance. Because George is not from this school. He's just a guy, ex-drug addict from some other town. And he's like, yeah, yeah come to the dance. It's fine. Because I always remember we were like prom, right? Or whatever. We always had to go with people that were from the school. I wasn't allowed to go to my prom. Oh, no. I was banned because um, I had an apple pie fight on the bus. <laughs> you had an apple pie fight well, on the bus? Well, actually, no. I didn't have an apple pie fight on the bus. I've made an apple pie in cookery class. Uh, two guys um, from the year below that were always winding all the girls on the bus up took my apple pie and started a food fight with it. Um <laughs> This is a better plot than the plot we're dealing uh, yeah. with in this book. And and then I um, got blamed for the whole thing and me and my friend got banned from going to the prom. Damn. Even we didn't even do it. See, if the you... bus driver hated us anyway. <clears throat> right. Uh, because we were quite naughty on the bus. Um, Everyone was naughty on the bus. Yeah. That's what buses were for. Um, so he, he told the school that it was us. See, we were allowed to go to the prom. If you went to Sweet Valley High, though, it wouldn't matter because there'd be a dance like the next day anyway. Yeah, so exactly. if you couldn't do the prom, you just go to the, the next one. That's the only school one. dance I ever had. Well, that's the only school dance I ever had. I think there were like two dances the whole time I was in school, in senior school, right? Yeah. Uh, or juniors, for that matter, like any school, right? So I don't understand how, like, sudden, like, Sweet Valley has a dance every day, apparently. Um, so anyway, anyone can rock up to this dance. So uh, George is allowed in. Um, Jess and Liz are getting ready for the big dance, and uh, Liz is clearly off with her. But but Jess is, you know, being defensive. And um, Jess is twirling around in front of Liz in a slinky red formal dress. So just twirling around in front of her. Yeah, that sounds yeah. really irritating. Yeah, Jess is completely oblivious. Um, Liz says that she uh, she wants to repay Jess for all the things she's done for her and Enid in yeah. a very sinister way. But Jess yeah. just doesn't pick up on it, obviously. And, and she says that. Uh, she says, oh, you look sexy. Can Ronnie handle it? And again, Jessica reminds Liz she's only going as a favour to Enid. Yeah, yeah, it's all to help Enid. Yeah, and then she says, um, you've been looking at me all night like I'm the Boston Strangler. Are you, are you mad at me? And Liz says, why would I be? And Jess says, exactly. You should be grateful for all the sacrifices I'm making. Yeah, she's making all the sacrifices just to help Enid. And Liz just smiles to herself because she has a plan. She has such a... Oh, my I'm God. I hope it's better than dunking her in the pool. See, at this point, when I was reading it, I was like, oh, my God, is she going to do, like, Carrie? Just drop <laughs> loads of blood on her at the dance oh, or something? Oh, that would be amazing. It would be incredible, right? 
that doesn't happen. Spoilers. Oh, that would be so good. Um, because I was like, well, they're going to a dance and someone's going to yeah. get revenge on them. And I she's was got like, to go up to the stage I mean, it wouldn't be crime. blood because yeah. it's Sweet Valley, but they could have dunked like Gunge or something on her, you know, like yeah. something like that. Yeah. But, but no, no, that's not what happens. So, um, uh, they all arrive to the dance at the same time: Jess, Ronnie, Todd, and Elizabeth. And, and the, the gym... Go on, go on, sorry. I was just going to say that obviously the droids are playing. That's what yeah. I was going to say. And the gym has been transformed into a fairyland mm. by tiny lights and shimmery decor. It sounds cool. And yeah, the droids, who must be the most hardworking band in Sweet Valley, because the they most play The most boring everything. band in Sweet Valley. Like, oh, the droids again. Yeah. They're belting out a steamy Linda Ronstadt tune. Yes. And I don't know who she is either. A singer-songwriter from that sort of time I think I think she is real oh no she is real she's definitely real yeah um, so Liz starts her plan so she goes over to Caroline Pierce yes uh, who's the, the the town gossip yeah uh, and she whispers something in her ear mm. we don't know what yet we don't know what yet uh, then Miss Dalton shows up and everyone starts whispering someone shouts hey where's Ken but she doesn't pay any attention <laughs> And she just smiles and goes over to dance with Mr. Collins. She's going to start a new rumour. Well, basically, that's it. Storyline dropped. This is yeah, how they drop it. it. She turns up, doesn't care about the rumours about her being a paedophile. Doesn't care, turns up, dances with another teacher, and the storyline is dropped and it's fine. That, that's where that B-plot went. You're right, the B-plot B this week went nowhere it's compared to weak, like yeah. last time. Um, yeah, nowhere near as good. I mean, last time was ridiculous, actually, as well. It was, but it was way more entertaining yeah. than this one. And and this one doesn't feel like it has any payoff. They just no. drop it. It's just ditched at this point. They're like, oh, we didn't want to go anywhere with it. Because, like, Ken's not even here, right? Um, No, he's not. Oh, no, that's right. No, sorry. Yes, he's got mono. It. He's got no, mono, so, so he can't come. No, uh, sorry, it, I did make a note of this. So Todd says that Ken was going to be taking Lila to the dance, but he ditched her when he found out that she started the rumours about him and Miss Dalton. Uh, um, so he's not at the dance, and he's basically left Lila um, with that date. Um, and then, of course, Enid turns up with George. She's glowing when she turns up, and her eyes are shining. She's wearing a power move off the shoulder dress that showed off her slender figure to perfection. Mm. Um, so I, lo- I love how she's she's shown up and just been like, fuck you, everybody. And she looks great. And she's with she's this with really George, handsome guy. Who nobody knows as no, well. So new guy, like, handsome oh my guy. God. It's yeah. the kind of guy that, that, that Liz, <clears throat> uh, sorry, Liz, Liz, Jess would immediately that be Jessica's after. Fuming. Yeah, exactly. It's like, well, she's got a better date than Ronnie. Yeah, she has. Um um, so she, yeah, she, Ina goes up to Liz and they sort things out. Yeah. Um, and Elizabeth says that she knows who did tell about the letters and they're not going to get away with it. Ha, yeah. Ha, ha. So that's the kind of scoop we do. It is, and, and this is the thing. It builds they the won't tension get away up. With like this pesky it kids. builds the tension up. Like, oh, this 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 revenge is going to be like so dastardly yeah. and like, what are they going to do? And it's like because last time I don't complained. get your hopes up. The revenge isn't. No, I know. But this is the thing. Like last time, I was like, "This revenge does not fit the amount of things that that Jessica did." All she got was thrown in the swimming pool, and also they all thought it was Elizabeth anyway. So basically, Elizabeth was the one that should have been embarrassed, um, even though it was just thrown in. This time, I'm like, "Oh, she's really going to get it now." Like, what are they going to do to get her? And like I said, I was thinking Carrie. I was like, "Oh, they're going to throw guns on her or something." And were no. you satisfied? With no, the I was not satisfied with the revenge <laughs> at all. Um, but Ina basically says that they did it. Whoever it was did her a favor because it got her away from Ronnie, and that she's now with George, who you know she loves, and and is the right Mister Right. Yeah, so Jessica did actually do her a favor. She did technically, not not intentionally. Not do intentionally, her a favor. though. Yeah. Um. But then um, it's time for the big announcement. Who is going to be queen and king? So Queen is Jessica. Which I was a bit surprised at, because I thought it might be Enid. But yeah, yeah that would have been that would have been revenge. Yeah. I was thinking like maybe it would be Enid. Uh but yeah. So uh, Jessica is announced Queen of the Dance. But who's gonna be king? Winston. Winston. I should, sorry, I should have not just blurred that out. It's a big build up. <laughs> so, well, there is no build. There's Winston no point in Egbert. building it up because this book built up and then it was a massive yeah. like. So Jessica is absolutely furious. Yeah. So because she's she's he's a cartoon. Remember? The big revenge that Liz has planned is to have Winston be king 
with Jess. So not only is that, well, I mean, it doesn't feel like much of a revenge at all, to be honest. But also, I was like, what a horrible thing to do to Winston, who's yeah. like really fancies Jess. And like, she's just basically chucking him under the <clears throat> bus so that people can laugh at them. I guess. He's probably just really happy to be king, though. I guess. I guess. But it did feel a bit of a horrible thing to do to Winston, to be like... And apparently the the king and queen have to spend the next year, like, doing... Fulfilling, like, school obligations together. Yes. I don't really know what, I I guess, like... So they're going to have to spend time together, basically. Yeah, well, of course, um, because there's a dance every fucking day in Sweet Valley High. <laughs> uh, apparently the the big disco dance is in three weeks and um, she's stuck with uh, with Winston. So I'm guessing what he's insinuating... What's dance that... for again? Well, we don't know. This is... This is... I thought this was this a prom. This is the fall dance apparently. Oh, right, okay. So they must have a dance every season. Right, and one in yesterday and one in three yeah. weeks. And they have the Christmas dance probably. I am okay. willing, I will bet you now, right... If they cover the big disco dance in a book, I guarantee you the droids are playing that dance. Okay. Well, I'm, we'll I'm, willing to, I'm willing to we'll bet. We'll see. Um, and, uh, of course, then um, Liz tells Jess. She says that, yeah, I started... Uh, oh, yes, sorry. So she makes out that there were there were rumours, weren't there? That, that her... Yeah. That Jess and Winston... Like, Jess had fallen for Winston... And so, yeah, she's... She, she, Jess tells Kara that she wants to refuse the crown. Um, and then, yeah, Kara tells her that everyone's been saying that she wanted Winston to be king. Yeah. Um, and that uh, she was into him. And Kara even says, I thought it was a bit weird, but fair enough. Just believed it. That's how gossip goes in Sweet Valley High. Yeah. Um, and Liz then, of course, tells Jess that she was the one that started the rumours um, because of what she did to Enid. Um, Jessica briefly thinks about strangling Liz on the spot but stops because she doesn't want to go to jail Um, and Liz basically says "Um, I write the eyes and ears for the oracle and uh, I will make sure this rumour is spread yeah and she says if you don't accept the crown um, and then if you don't accept the crown I'm going to tell the whole school what you did to Enid yeah and Jessica basically like she knows she's been a terrible person and gone way too far yeah. So she doesn't want everyone to know what bitch she is. Yeah, so she at least realises that much. Yeah, so she, she agrees and she has to go on stage with Winston um, who apparently looks like a scarecrow in a tuxedo that's too short for him. I love Winston. I know. I like him on the TV show as well. I like it. He's he's great on the TV show. We were watching an episode yeah. last night and I was like, oh, I really like Winston in the show. Um, but I really like him in the books. He comes across like really yeah. lovely. Like when she when Liz went to see him in the book, I was like, oh, he's really innocent. And he's just like, why would I ever do that? Like George has turned his life around and they're all really nice. You know, in this book, the books where like every pretty much everyone's kind of horrible in a way, apart from maybe Enid and, and Winston, they've all, they're all like, those are innocents. But even Liz, who's meant to be like a really nice person, she just comes across really smug and arrogant quite a lot of the time yeah. uh, whereas Winston's just lovely you know I'm no Liz fan I know you're not um, but yeah so Jessica that's the big revenge on yeah, Jessica yeah the photographer asked him to kiss for the camera <laughs> yep and, I could um, just I had a like picture of all that happening and Jessica looking absolutely furious and Winston stands on her toe again oh, does <laughs> yeah yeah bless him bless him so and Winston's then she obviously sees, happy, she sees but... Bruce leaving the dance with a stunning redhead yep must be the 19 year old it must be the 19 year old yeah the ancient 19 year old um and that's where we leave it but is it over is is jess's pursuit of bruce over will she get with bruce what's gonna happen what is the next book the next book it says can jessica play bruce patman's game and win oh. find out in suit valley high number three playing with fire that doesn't bode well does it that title no um, so yes, um, this one for me, way shorter than Double Love, but nowhere near as entertaining as Double Love, if I'm honest. Yeah, I think it was just a very long-winded way of telling a story that could have been told in 50 pages. It honestly feels like, to me, if you dropped um, if you dropped the Miss Dalton bit, this honestly could have been the B-plot to a different story. Yeah. Like, you know, tell the be- the main story and then this could be going on in the background. It just doesn't feel like it would need it to be a whole book. And you can kind of see that because it is like half the size. Um, but it was really entertaining. I thought the second half picked up quite a lot. It was the first half that was dragging. Yeah. Well, 
anyway, we, we've read it, so other people don't have you to. You don't have now. to read this one. We, um, we've done it for you. And uh, you know, because you've read ahead, uh, the book's coming on now. We're getting into yeah, really good books. Yeah, we're on books. to a good run next. Yeah. So the next few books are all, all classics. But we're, so. we're doing every book we're taking the rough with the smooth we're, we're doing them all so uh yeah next next time we'll be uh playing with fire i'm excited for that one yeah i'm really excited for that one oh, that's gonna be a good one i know exactly what happens in it. i know you you're do. gonna like it yeah you're all gonna like it i'm excited um so thanks for listening um find us on instagram at kelly's roadhouse yes um and uh yeah youtube amazon music itunes uh, Spotify, Podbean, everywhere you can get uh, podcasts, Under Durs Productions podcasts, or uh, just look up Kelly's Roadhouse. Yep. Okay, so uh, thanks for listening. Bye. We'll catch you next time. Cheers. Cheers.